Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Quite a few people have commented on the AT&T IP pass-through video lately, which coupled with me switching back to AT&T prompted me to revisit IP pass-through and bypassing the AT&T residential gateway. Since I have fiber in my neighborhood and AT&T is offering symmetrical high-speed internet, this caused me to make some changes to my network as well. I opted to change out my firewall, which is the Ubiquiti USG, for the U Ubiquiti UDM Pro, which can handle speeds higher than the USG with intrusion prevention and intrusion detection turned on. That was one of the biggest catalysts for me to make that change. There's a couple of bypass methods with the UDM Pro, but at this time, I didn't see the benefit of doing them from a time standpoint and from the fact that I would have to make some configuration changes directly to the UDM Pro. And with it being new and this not necessarily being directly supported by AT&T or Ubiquiti, I didn't want to do that. So for now, I'll show you how to bypass the AT&T BG210-700, which is the more common of the devices that AT&T seems to be offering at this moment. And at the end of the video, I'll discuss the complete bypass method a little bit more in detail. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is log into your residential gateway modem. Usually the default IP address is 192.168.1.254, unless you've changed that address or changed the subnet on your device itself. So from here, you're gonna go ahead and once you get to the main screen, you're gonna go ahead and log in to the device and click on firewall. You're then going to click on packet filter. And then at this point, you're gonna be asked to type in your device access code. This can usually be found on the side of the modem. If you haven't changed it, it should still be the default. You can change it in most cases, but I don't really see the point in doing that. It's not necessary that you need to change it. So going with the default is usually fine. All right, so now that we're in the packet filter screen, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to disable packet filters. Now you see that the changes have saved. So from here, we can go to the firewall advanced tab and change some of the firewall settings. All right, so all of this needs to be set to off. So we're just gonna go down the list and turn each option off. You don't wanna do any ICMP uh, pinging or anything like that. You basically do not want this device to respond. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to save. Now the final step in this will be making sure that you have IP pass through on. And I always like to hit save twice just to verify. So we're gonna go ahead and hit IP pass through. We're gonna go to pass through mode. We're gonna select that. We're then going to choose, uh, uh, well, actually we're gonna enter the MAC address manually. All right, make sure you set to DHCP fix. Go ahead and hit save. And then at this point, you should be ready to reboot all of the devices. In some cases, you may want to leave your, um, your wireless on. I left my wireless network on in the event that I need to get back into the AT&T device for some reason, but you don't have to do that. So you can go back to the status page and disable uh, the Wi-Fi, or you can go ahead and restart the device. So we're gonna go ahead and restart. This usually takes a couple of minutes. When you restart the AT&T modem, if you have fiber or if you have an ONT on site, I would recommend rebooting that as well as the router that you intend to use in place of your AT&T residential gateway. In my case, it's gonna be my newer UDM Pro, uh, but at the time of the video, I was still using my USG. So reboot that device as well, just to make sure everything gets uh, a fresh boot. And that way the 
uh, your router can pull the, the IP address that it needs for the external IP address. You really won't see any changes here until the device boots back up. At that point, I would say just refresh your main page for your router, log in there and verify that you're connected. Okay, so real quick, why didn't I opt for the complete bypass method up front? Well, a few reasons. It's not necessarily supported by Ubiquiti or AT&T. So if anything happened and I bricked the device, I'd be on my own. Also, currently I'm not experiencing any of the issues some have reported with the IP pass through method, such as latency issues, uh, drop connections and things of that nature, which is the main reason why I did the initial video and why I opted for the complete bypass method originally, because the modem at the time was having quite a few issues with disconnects and latency. So with that being completely or almost completely noticeably eradicated by moving the fiber and by getting the uh, AT&T, the newer version of the AT&T modem, I don't see the need at this time. However, I may try the complete bypass method at some point, just it, it, there's not enough skin in the game for me to do it at this point. Okay, so with that being said, That'll do it for this episode. I may do a review of the uh, UDM Pro and some of the features and how it compares to the USG. Mostly it's just more powerful, has more RAM and a lot more computing power. I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.